Welcome back to another exciting episode of Psychotronic Coast to Coast, where we break down the best and or worst in film, mostly the worst, because we have really bad picking skills. Um, but tonight, we actually watched a good movie. It's called The Mutilator. You may have heard of it. It is a, uh, I would say, it is a quote-unquote second or third-tier slasher. It is a, it never got a sequel, which it totally should have gotten. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're... We we just watched this fall break, aka the mutilator. So, uh, yeah. This is my co-host Owen, of course, who's here every week. Um, well, every week we're here because we missed last week. Uh, and yeah, that. So, how's it going, Owen? What do we got? Pretty good. Mm-hmm. This is one we actually both own. Yeah, we both have the slipcover magically. Ooh. They whack. Bl- Mike. My blood rage doesn't have a slip cover. Oh, mine does. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. But yeah, so this is my first time watching this. And this You've is seen my second it before, time. though. Yeah, I saw it last year when I first got the, the Blu ray. Double I've actually blood, knew, blood rage. Had never heard of it. What? It's fairly I've infamous. I've never heard of this movie. Man. It's good stuff. It must not be on most people's radars because I never heard of it. It's, it's one of those ones that's infamous for the gore and it didn't have a wide release for the longest fucking time. 15 years people were asking for it and it just and then finally it came out. Had like a crap DVD at some point. But yeah, here we are. So, do you remember the movie? Yeah. Alright, why don't you take us through it and we'll, uh, we'll deconstruct this bad boy. So it starts out, you see uh, a woman making a birthday cake. Fake frosting it, by the way. Super fake. It was fake. already made. But uh, you see the kid, like 10 years old, if I remember right. He, uh, Something like that, he's, yeah. He cleaned all his dad's guns because it's his dad's birthday. And he picks one up off the shelf. Looked like a, maybe an M1. Yeah, yeah, it was a rifle of some sort, bolt action. But yeah, uh, he, you said he loaded it. I guess I missed that part. I think he loaded it. But all I saw was he pointed it at the wall. He looked down the barrel pulled, first. Pulled the trigger and uh, it was loaded and or he loaded it and boom. Right through the wall. Shot his mama in the back. Killing yep. her. One shot kill. Kid's going to be an expert at Call of Duty when he grows up. <laughs> and he's obviously shocked by this. Well, wouldn't and... you be? Uh, maybe. I mean, how many people shoot their <laughs> the family member through a wall <laughs> in a childhood mistake? I mean, I, I imagine quite a few, you know, but, like, I think it'd be a shocking moment in your life. Like, wow, I just did that. Fuck. <laughs> His uh, dad comes home from hunting, although he had no gun on him, oddly enough. If you notice, I don't remember him coming in with a gun. He had a bunch of ducks. Uh, he sees this, uh, shoves the kid away. Obviously, he's in shock, too. Uh, goes in the other room, grabs a gun, points it's the same gun, actually. He points at the kid. Kid runs off. Then he drags his dead wife in the other room, takes the sign off the thing that said, Happy birthday, cleaned your guns, Dad. Sticks it on the mom for some reason, and then just sits there drinking. <laughs> yeah, he opens up his uh, globe that has all his booze in it and just goes to town on it i mean what would you do if you came home and your kid killed your wife i mean chill call a drink you know drink drink a bit and then maybe call the cops and like yo my uh my wife's been dead for about three hours now <laughs> my son fucking killed her 
And I've been so distraught. I've been sitting here be- drinking. So maybe you should come take care of her. Like, uh, sir, why did you put the sign on her? I don't know. I was distraught. It was did I funny. mention that part yet? <laughs> distraught. But then we cut two years later. I don't know how they said how many years, but... Uh, enough. College kids. College kids. One of them is that boy. Yes, he is. As we learned, but it's him and his friends are all drinking at a bar. And when he when he gets a call from his dad, wants him to uh, go shut up the uh, the the condo on an island. Yeah, the summer cottage, so that they could uh, close up for the winter, basically. I know. I, I want to ask this though. How does a clearly insane? Because we already know it's the dad that's going to kill everyone. Spoiler. Yeah, it's it's made pretty clear throughout the film that it's the father doing. But he's he's in he's insane and an alcoholic. How does he afford this fucking condo? This is a very important question. Well, um, it's implied that he's a perfectly functional human being that does work, so I imagine he pays for it like everyone else. I guess. I mean, he does hint like. Because he doesn't want to do it. He's like, crumples the paper up. I'm like, fuck you, dad. Yeah. You've treated me like shit my whole he, life. Because it's implied that he does this wife. frequently, you know. <laughs> yeah. So apparently afterwards, even though he's clearly been a drunk since that day, he still somehow functioned up to this point anyways. <laughs> until he decides, now's the time to take out my son. To be fair, it is kind of hinted at through the actions of the dad that there is functional alcoholism in their family. So I'm assuming maybe he's just a functional alcohol at this point. I mean, to be fair, tons of college students are already functional alcoholics by default. So We need that movie. The, the, the in-between where the dad's... Plotting to murder everyone for 10 years. And hunting, and then he's like, yeah, someday I'm going to kill my son. The one where he had to wait till he got to a sporting age. Drowning in his dis- depression and despair while drinking and hanging out with a bunch of biker buddies and trashing a house that he paid money for. And yeah. uh, and and then one day it gets too much, and then he decides to tell everyone to come clean up so he can murder them in a fit of rage. Yeah. That's the whole setup, I'm, basically. He's like, I'm going to kill my son. And the other guy's like, you wouldn't go shoot a fawn, would you? you got to wait till they're mature. <laughs> I know, right? He's like, yeah, you're right. Well, we get all this bit because uh, basically the, the the son takes them all around the house and shows them like all the random shit that her, his irresponsible father has done. You know, shows them like he's got the, he had a battle axe which is currently missing, and there's a gaff hook, and they talk about the motorboat. Basically, showing all them. They basically for the first twenty minutes of the movie, the first fifteen minutes they set up the the characters. Yeah. The next fifteen minutes they tell you all the things they're gonna kill everyone over the next forty five minutes. So <laughs> pretty much, yeah. We'll backtrack a little bit. So he no, doesn't. I'm just saying, yeah, that's that he's was the like, setup. yeah, but he's kind of like fuck that. But then they all see that uh, it's on a beach, and they want to go party. That's they talk to him into go. He he wasn't even gonna do it. You can go by himself, basically. Yeah, but yeah, they go and decide to they're gonna party there. Uh, Ooh, his party. girlfriend, who. We fought about for a while, but I know I am 100% correct. Not can even argue on the stream. We've already cleared it up. <laughs> the uh, the friends are always picking on his, the main guy's girlfriend, because calling her a virgin and stuff. Because those two have not had sex. It's very clear that they have not had sex. Yeah, she lords it over him like some sort of power. <laughs> and you know how you fight that? You go, fuck off. I don't, I, don't fucking lord over the shit. It's not how it's, we're like, yeah, no, no. There's one, there's, you know, there's, there's a line between playfulness and lording. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. No, I'm kidding. I don't give a shit. Come yeah. on. Like you said, they were walking around the house. It was like, oh, this is where the battle axe would be. Oh, look at that yeah. gaff hook. I like, I like how there's a battle axe outline on the wall. Yeah. Because it's kind of dusty. <laughs> the wall's all dirty and shit, except where the battle axe has been sitting. So. Yeah, and even in the garage, you're like, that's this. Oh, that's a small motorboat engine. Right? Okay, we get it. <laughs> oh my god. I also liked 
which nobody seemed to really fucking pay attention to. When they're in the trophy room, there's like, oh, there's a deer head, there's this and that. And then there's just a picture of a dead dude that the dad ran over with a speedboat and chopped up with the engine. It's just on his wall, like it's one of his trophies. Right? No so one, no one's like, eh. <laughs> oh, and like, he threw what? some weird ninja star thing at the wall, and then he liked it so much that he framed it by putting a nailing a frame up around it, like some weirdo. Which, I mean, it, it came into play, but he didn't actually kill anybody with one of those things. Yeah, no one, no one got really seriously injured by them at all. They just kind of got hurt a little bit. So then there's a lot of standard bullshit fucking drinking and trying to have sex. It's all about that he said he said bullshit? <laughs> Pretty much. So one couple goes off. They end up walking on a beach and they end up some fucking pool that's covered with a tarp. Yep. That place was weird. It was like a pool where it's like one thing in this movie that constantly was doing was uh, like why does the water look like that? Oh, it's so murky because there's too much chlorine. They're like, oh, that's going to be something. <laughs> But it was like a whole dar- a dome of tarp, and then there was plants in there with like lights on them. I, I didn't. Yeah, it was some person's <laughs> like half-assed enclosed pool, basically. Yeah, they go swimming naked. Yeah, they go skinny dipping specifically. And then there's like they were playing some game where they're trying to find each other. I guess that's how murky the water was. For those was. who are, uh, are su- hunting, for, hunting for such things, this is the film's only nude, nude scenes are, are in the sequence. So yeah, I know. I know. There's like three perverts in the audience who would give a shit. So you know, <laughs> heads up to you guys. It's, it's almost mostly teasing because like you know she's naked and like there's a faraway shot and like oh is that a nip? And then there's finally just up, one yeah. scene where she's floating on her back. Her boobs just... pop out a few times like because she's like swimming around and shit. But like <laughs> yeah, it's real teasy. But yeah, then they yeah. finally give you a, the boob shot you wanted. Yeah, if you're yeah. And she's killed. Yep. They try to set it up like it's the boyfriend caught her and brought her into water, but no. The dude killed her. I like he was also wearing swimming crunks. If you notice when he, he came out of the pool, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he kills her, drowning. Starting off a little, little lame with the kills. But it does yeah, definitely for a film that's notable. For a film that's <laughs> notable for its kills, it does start. It does slowly build at least. And then he uh, tricks the boyfriend by leaving clothes and like. Like it's supposed to be a game. Mm-hmm. He follows him back to the house and into the garage where he is killed with the boat engine, right? He's yep. The boat engine one. Boat engine to the gut. So it's like a drowning you don't really see. He just gets pulled under and that's the end. And then it's just like a long scene of the guy getting boat engine. You get a close his up death the, was... You get a close up through the motorboat blades onto the guy with blood sp- spraying everywhere <laughs> as he's grinding into the guy and then it cuts to the gore where he's just like lacerated and all fucked up and yeah pretty cool. the gore was great the yeah oh yeah Yo, if, you're, look, if you're a gore hound this is this is the movie for you for slashes this is up there with a uh, prowler with the kills but the uh the guy's death acting not so much well you know he's like <clears throat> and then just slowly was kept making that noise as he was sliding down just, he just died awkwardly. I was expecting him to get back up. Uh, go down again. Just keep popping the flame, uh, screaming. Uh. <laughs> but then he uh, brings them into this back room again. There was a scene where she's like, you know, oh, he hangs the nets there. It's like, why are they so big and spiky? And then we see that he, sh- he takes their bodies and then shoves their heads onto the hooks, hangs yep. them in there. All the Texas Chainsaw Master kind of. And now the other four left. are like, where are they? They were walking on the beach trying to find them when they were dying. They come back. They played some game. Monopoly. And no, then, that was then they before were, they oh, left. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were playing Monopoly, then they left, right? And then uh, they played Blind Man's Bluff, which was where the majority go outside, one person hides, and then... They each disperse into the house, try to find the person. When they find the person, they camp near that person until all of them are found, or all all end up there. Basically, is the idea. That went on way too long. It was <laughs> supposed to be kind of suspenseful because the guy was in the house, the dad was in the house, stalking everyone. He almost killed somebody. And you're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh. 
Yeah, he was behind his son. Yeah. With like a, what, what, he had a tire iron or something? Yeah, a tire iron. Exactly. (laughs) But nothing happens, and then everyone in the killer decides to go to bed. (laughs) Yep, killer goes into where he spiked all the bodies and decides to lay on a bunch of pallets and go to sleep. Yep. And then, uh, Ralph. I only remember Ralph's name. He's trying to get it on with his woman, and the other two are arguing about, we're not going to have sex. And it almost seemed like she was going to make him sleep on the floor, but... I know. Got, I was going to like, He got no, to no, sleep no, no, in the no. bed. No, no, no. <laughs> Like, it's cool. I get the no sex thing, but I'm sleeping in the goddamn bed, because, fuck, I had to drive this shit. I'm going to sleep <laughs> in the fucking bed. This is that's it. I mean, I'll we'll do heads and feet, whatever makes you more comfortable. I'm sleeping in the fucking bed, because I fucking drove. <laughs> that's the rules. But of course, the other girl was like, I don't want to do it because you need to lock the house up. You can't lock the house up unless you find them, which we should mention. They spent like three to four hours trying to find them and couldn't. Right. And now he's going to go out by himself and find them before he locks the house up. Bizarre. It's pretty ridiculous. But he ends up in the garage looking around. We also should go back a little bit. Before they got back, the cop was wandering around their house that they talked to on the beach. And he got his head chopped off. Oh, yes, he did. And put on the hooks. So there was a dead cop. Correct. There was a dead cop. Which you thought it was a board. I thought it might have been a machete. You get stabbed in the cover head with it says him. by sword. So maybe that was a sword? Oh, it may have been, but I don't think there's a sword in it. It's just a tagline, first of all. <laughs> there's, a, hey. there's a band called Frightmare that has a song called By, Pick, by Sword, By Pick, By Axe, By Bye. It's a good song, too. I'm going to say it's a sword, just so the cover doesn't lie to me. Sure. I, I, mean, I mean, we don't see all of it, so... I mean, it looked kind of like a like either rusty or wooden. That's all I know. So, <laughs> And it wasn't like... I couldn't tell what it was. I wasn't I, paying attention to it until way late into the shot, and I was like, oh, shit, I probably should have been looking at this thing. I just like they run in the cop, and that girl's like, his battle axe is missing. Someone might have broke in, and he's like, nah, I'm sure my dad took it. And he's like, I'm not going to make a report until you call me. But then, like, a second later, he's just wandering around the house with a flashlight. <laughs> I was like, hmm. He said he wasn't going to report anything. He's like, I'll check it out anyway. Yeah. But back you know, to... There's a continuity error, too, at some point, right? He was stalking around the house, but he had one thing in one shot, and then the white in another shot, he had something else, and he was back to the thing, right? No. Like, he had he was walking around the house with the hook. Yeah, the gap then later hook. he had the axe, but he had the axe all the way until he put her... Uh, yeah, but, but he had the gaff hook, and then you see him walk around the house, and then cut <laughs> to him outside, and he's got the axe, not the gaff hook, and then he grabs the girl and takes her back to the gaff hook, which is way later in the film. But the gaff yeah. hook's still inside. Like he, it, That's a continuity error, I'm pretty sure. It just seems like he picked it up, brought it in the garage, and then grabbed his battle axe again. Oh, maybe he's I don't know why did. he'd do that, but... Prepping this I mean, he was space. toting that thing around the whole, the whole movie, and we're like, is he gonna use it? Because almost every scene he was holding it, and then like he just had another weapon later. He's like, ah, eh, not time for the battle axe. Yeah, it's kind of weird. He's probably um, like, I'm gonna kill my son with the battle axe because that's my nickname for my wife. Uh, too much of a stretch. Too much of a stretch. <laughs> Anyways, Ralph the jokester is in the garage. He's talking to himself. He, he thinks, one of those, he thinks those... that the two he's looking for are in the in the in the closet in the uh, storage yeah, closet. The panties are on there from earlier. Yeah, because the killer, but the the dad put the panties on there like a weird creepo. You know? Well, that was to trick the guy to go over there. It's like he killed him. It's true. But he throws one of those little triangle thingies. I don't even know what those were supposed to be. He throws it in the door. Which wakes up the dad who's sleeping in there. And all the screaming, and, oh, blah, 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 I didn't wake him, but throwing the thing into the wood, that woke him. Yeah. Doesn't mean now I'm sense. blanking on how he died. Uh, He opened the door and got a th- uh, got the oh, uh, yeah, trident to the neck. It was a trident. Yep. It's all fishing right. stuff, so it's a trident. I don't or a spear think you might have tridents. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a, it's a whatchamacallit, the harpoon, the harpoon. The trident harpoon tip for spearing yeah. fish. It just looks like a pitchfork to me. It's not, though. It's for spearing fish. And it's got a trident tip. And you put it in your thing and you shoot it and it spears the thing and you pull it out. Is that what that's supposed to was? Yep. I, I just thought he broke it. It's the, uh, it's, it's, it's a, um, it's the, just the, the gun part, the, the stabby part. 
the trident part. There we go. Christ. Yeah. Well, he pins him to the door with it. Yep, on the inside of the door with it. Through the neck. Mm-hmm. I was kind of hoping he would just then shut the door and go back to bed. But no, yeah. he goes back to stalking around. Yep. And this is where he got the gaff hook, set it, and then I guess set it out, but didn't, but it looked yeah. like he was carrying it with him instead. I think I just got confused, so I think yeah. you're right. I think he set it on the bench. Yeah, we don't see him set it. He was walking around the house with it, and then we see him later with the, the battle. Oh, you're house. right. Okay, so it is a continuity error. So I am not crazy. It is a continuity error. You just somehow he doesn't have the gaff hook, and he has the axe instead. Okay. But they, they stick with it, though, because, like, now his girlfriend's looking for him. They realize nobody's back, mm-hmm. so they're going to leave. And then she's like, I need to keep looking. And I thought the couple got in the car, but apparently they went around the other side of the house. Yep. And uh, and uh, she gets grabbed by the throat, and he's holding the battle axe at that point. But then he walks her, slowly walks her into the garage while choking her, smashes everything off the table with the battle axe. No one hears that, of course. Yeah. Lays her down and uh, takes the old giant hook and uh, shoves it up her vagina and it comes out her stomach. Yeah, it, it comes out of her pelvis, actually. What it looks like is it comes out right after her pelvic bone, which is probably a horrendous, awful feeling, I imagine. But yeah, she takes the gaff hook up the vagina. It's not pretty. <laughs> I made a joke earlier that the uh, virgin was going to get the gaff hook up the vagina. Yeah. And you didn't say anything because you obviously knew what was gonna happen i was yeah. like uh yeah, right kill wrong girl yeah yep. Yeah. but yeah, yeah it's a particularly brutal and needlessly sexualized kill but uh you know <laughs> it's uh it's there it's in the movie and it's gory so hey yeah, yeah. it I is mean, what it is can't change it apparently hearing none of this none of the couple. screaming and dying of the, of the girl, poor yeah. girl as she gets gaff hooked in the crotch the main couple walk in the garage and see this horrific because she's still laying on the table he didn't put her anywhere honestly she'd still be alive and screaming at this point cause she's probably bleeding that slowly from the fucking gaff hook I mean <laughs> but whatever what are, you, what are you gonna do dad, dad shows up with the battle axe and he uh the main guy which I can't remember his name he shoves his his girlfriend into the back room and locks it from the outside by the looks. I don't, I don't know why. Ed, by the way. <laughs> Ed is the son. Ed. Yeah. Didn't he, like, lock her in the back room with a board? Yes. He, he f- locked her in there to save her so that, that guy wouldn't find her. And then uh, Dad knocks him down, ties him up with fish line, and then he's going to chop him in the head with a battle axe. But she busts out and uh, throws some shit at him. So he... T- he ends up does stab the son in the leg with the like the, the pointy tip on the axe. Yes, yeah. So he can't run away basically. With a ton of blood coming out. Yeah, because he hit him right in the fucking vein, right in the leg, <laughs> right in the thigh. And then she grabs one of those little metal triangle things, chucks it, gets him in the head. Right in the temple, and then he immediately pulls it out because come on, it's like not really that deadly. He pulls it out, hardly any blood. Yeah, even though it's a head wound, it doesn't bleed almost at all. And then she just starts reaching in drawers and pulls out what I thought was a ruler, but it's a ruler slash knife. It looks like it's a knife for gutting fish, so that's why there's a ruler so you can measure the fish and take a photo, and then you can gut it with the <laughs> it's a, it's a tool. It's a it's, it's like a it's hidden inside the the ruler, I guess. That's what I would I, I think it is. That she shanks him right in the heart. Yep. He goes down. So she frees him, puts him in the driver's seat. and he. I like how slow it was to get him in the driver's seat. And then he's like, you got to drive. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, well, no shit, long, Sherlock. Like, overly long, drawn-out scene of her rolling up the window and all this stuff. Locked and the then, doors. of course, earlier, which we didn't mention, is before they left, the car was a little finicky to start. Oh, yeah, so yeah of course. Comes into play, too. Stereotyped, yeah, she, yeah. She floods it by jamming on the gas a bunch. Which is something that like, uh, anyone who is basically born in the last thirty-five years hasn't had to ever deal with. When you when you start <laughs> old cars, you you had to pump the gas and then turn the key. But if you pumped it too much, you'd flood the engine. And you had to wait for it to like drain a bit before it would start. 
because it's yep. too much liquid. So just to clarify that for those who are like, what the fuck do they mean, flood the engine? You know, I, <laughs> I imagine if you're like 15 and you're watching this, you're like, what the fuck does that even mean? You know? Unless you have an old car. Yeah, but I mean, most people nowadays aren't going to run into that problem at all. You know, it's kind of, it literally is a problem of the past. <laughs> Anyway. I remember having that problem when yes. I wanted to drive a Camaro. We are old men. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, let's get back on track. Yeah, so he tells her to shut the lights off so the battery doesn't die. And wait a minute, the dad's gone. Although we saw him get up. Yeah, we saw him walk <laughs> around and bit behind them. And then I thought, like, the whole setup of her rolling up the window, he's going to break it. But no, he climbs on top of the car because it's a soft top. Yep. Starts chopping into it, which sound like gunshots every time you hit it. It's like bang. That's because there's metal rods in the uh, <laughs> in it, and I think that's what you're hearing is him whacking the metal rods, the hole, and it's going through the hole, and there's a sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> He's like choking the sun now, and uh, she finally gets it started. They back up into. Uh, 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 first, she gets the lighter and burns his hand oh, yeah. to get it released, and he falls to the back of the car. But he's still holding on. Well, like melts his hand. Yeah, well, it's pretty violent, pretty brutal burning. Uh, his hand is basically <laughs> melted like wax. Like, anyway, uh, so he falls yeah, he off slides the road. Yeah, he slides down to and like it's like recovering with his hand, uh, hanging off half the back. And she get, get, turn, gets the car turned on and backs him right up into a brick wall, cuts his bitch ass right in half. <laughs> well, not quite yet. Backs him in the wall. He's screaming. And I like that at this point. There's cops there. And they're just watching. Yep. <laughs> like them back at this guy. And then like they're not even like freaked out. They're like, pull forward. Like at that point, why would they be like, oh, that guy's bad and they're uh, fighting for the life? Not like those two just killed that guy. I know, right? But he's just calmly like, pull forward. And that's when you see the guys pulled in half, guts yeah, everywhere. His legs fall one way and his body goes the other. It's pretty fucking cool. And then the cop walks over and he's just like, ha ha, and chops his leg off with a battle axe. Yeah, I don't know, right? Like, wow. And then uh, apparently dies. Yep. I mean, obviously. Got cut in half. I, mean, yeah. I was kind of hoping he'd crawl around just with his front, leg, his hands like, I'm not done with you yet. Son. You later too should have had his the upper torso <laughs> of Ed's father killing teenagers. The and battle axe cuts. by chopping the legs and then chopping their heads. And then it cuts to them at a hospital, and apparently they're still a couple after all this. Yeah, he killed his mom, she killed his dad. They're a great couple, and that's something to bond over. They they, they, they committed patricide and matricide together, and separate. <laughs> we didn't even mention the cheesy song that you loved. Oh, the because... Fall Break song, I love it. I love the Fall Break <laughs> song. Because the original uh, title of the movie is Fall Break. Oh yeah, you know, on the screen stream they can see, but yeah. And then the ending's almost like a like an ending to a comedy movie, like a happy song's playing, that it's like so and so is that, and they're like it's a bunch eh. of goofy moments, <laughs> and yeah, it's one of those people like eh, Paul Martin or whatever, you know. Yeah. Oh, there, that's the movie. So what would you think? Movie. I kind of missed that there wasn't like a. Who's the guy killing people? Well, you'll get that with Blood Rage, so. Yeah. So there you go. In fact, Blood Rage got twists. You'll, be, you'll, you'll have fun. Overall, it was okay. I didn't really care for any of the, the people, so them dying didn't really bother me. <laughs> uh, I, I really like the gore effects in this movie. I think it's great, and the theme song is catchy as hell. Um, I really like this film. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bought it. It's not true at all. I blind buy things all the time. I actually did blind buy this. In fact, I should say I wouldn't have. I wouldn't still have it if I didn't like it. I would have gotten rid of it. All right. So, what would you rate this? Hmm. Like maybe a three. I give it a three and a half out of five. I liked it a little bit more than you, I assume. So, yeah. I like the picture inside. On the booklet <laughs> is completely different than the one on this. Because yep. there's a girl with short hair, which That's is not That's because the, the one that you're seeing there is uh, 
original art and the one on the sleeve is the pro or no sorry the one on the, pre the sleeve is original art and one of the other ones is a, repro is a recreation like a new art and no girl in bikini was hung up alive on any hooks well you know it wouldn't <laughs> be a, a good exploitation film if it didn't like you on the poster at least one way <laughs> so you recommend this one yeah you never seen it it's worth a watch it's I don't know watching. if I don't know Run out and paid twenty five bucks or whatever. <laughs> so you're uh, saying you regret paying twenty five dollars for it? No, but I mean, you'd have to be a slasher fan to begin with. So you wouldn't recommend this to people who weren't slasher fans, or you still would recommend to them? No, I mean, if you hate slashers, why would you buy it in the beginning? Well, no, no, you could like you could just not be a fan of slashers, but but you're like a fan of horror movies. I mean, you could still enjoy them. Mm -hmm. I don't think if you don't like slashers, I don't think you this ain't gonna change your mind. Yeah, I, I definitely not. I I don't think I would recommend it to you if you don't like slashers. But if you think slashers are okay, you might you might get some enjoyment out of this, especially if you love gore effects. So. Yeah, and if all you like is boobies and gore, you may be disappointed on the booby side, but gore side, you should get your boner. <laughs> your gore boner. <laughs> you know those people. Hey, whatever gets you, whatever floats your boat, it's none of my business. Like, could be the worst movie ever. Like, but the gore is so good. Five out of five. Oh, it's so good. The gore is so great. Look at the effects. <laughs> I mean, I'm like that too with special effects, though. So. You're like, oh man, look at all the cool miniature effects. Brandon, it looked fake. I don't care. Look at all the detail. You know, <laughs> like, I'm weird like that. All right, so we're going to wrap this up. What are we watching next week? I guess we're going to watch Blood Rage. My non slip cover. All right, we're watching Blood, Blood Rage. Rage. All right, next week we're watching Blood Rage. You don't have the limited edition, so we're watching whatever cut you have on there. It's a special edition. Cool. But mine's the limited edition, which has a bonus disc with a different cut of the film. No, I'm so, I'm so fancy. Yeah, I pre -order, it's one of those things. I have to look at all the limited editions. All right, so we'll see you guys next week with Blood Rage. Take it easy, guys. Peace.